Thank you, Your Honor. So, Dr. Scherer, maybe since we've already gone through this, this slow motion, let's just play this one from the start, and then you can add anything that you can provide to the jury from this angle. Sure. Here, let's play first, and then there we go. Um, I'll wait until the contact point. coming up here we go there's contact fall to the right this one doesn't show the rotation quite as much and we don't know the amount of counterclockwise rotation as well there could be a little there could be more or less right we're not sure but if you if you go backwards a little bit uh, in into the moment of the collision this one maybe shows uh, does this one show the skis coming between the skis Yes, it does, and I think it's better visualized in this one. Yeah, and and again, uh, what's the significance of that in terms of how the mechanism of the fall occurs? Well, um, that's Miss Paltrow's testimony, and it works for the physics of them falling and rotating slightly counterclockwise. Um, frankly, if it wasn't both skis, if it was one ski between hers, the kinematics would be the same. For example, if his right ski were on the outside of her right ski, it wouldn't change the general kinematics. This is generally, and I keep saying generally because we don't know the exact details of it, uh, this would work. So if we flipped the, the positions of the parties and Mr. Sanderson was in front, Ms. Paltrow came from behind, using this uh, as a good visual for the jury, will you explain the, your opinions about what we would expect to happen um, on Mr. Ramon's account, I should say. Well, Mr. Ramon's account is very different because in Mr. Ramon's account, uh, Mr. Sanderson goes spread eagle and his skis go out into that V and the inside edges catch. And that changes the kinematics, the motion. Um, it's a very different version of what happens with the contact. 